Good evening, darling. So, <clears throat> tonight is slightly more somber of a topic, so um, I'm going to go ahead and, and just get right to it. So, this is from an honest person who asks, Dear Lord Throndwil, I deeply respect your hesitance to speak of your wife, but as a curious elfling, I can't help but wonder what made you fall for her. Please do not take offence of the way I term that. I know she must have been absolutely wonderful in every way. I would just love to know more of her. Um, well, thank you, darling. I, 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 I do understand um, the curiosity that we have when we are young. Um, so, so I will talk a little bit, but not, not too much. Um, you know, it's, it's funny you talk about the curiosity because, of course, um, she was incredibly curious and very adventurous and sort of the exact opposite of me at that age. I, I was very reserved and um, I, I was very dutiful um, as far as um, being a prince and heir, but um, I, I hadn't really caught into the point where I, I felt like I would ever be able to step up into my father's shoes. And, um, you know, he, he just was such... Um, He's just such an icon of a man. Um, he had a commanding presence that I, I never thought I would ever be able to compare to. And so um, I, I did spend a lot of time sort of on my own. Sometimes, um, you know, I, I was supposed to always have at least one guardsman, but I often would slip out um, and, and find time to myself in the woods, I, I had a, a few spots that I, I liked to meditate at. And it was on one such day, um, as I was leaving to return back to the castle, when um, out of nowhere comes this young huntress, um, and uh, she shot at me. Luckily, she missed, I, I think because at the last minute she realized that I was not a deer, but in fact a person. And, um, you know, one might think that um, she would be gracious about that, but I, I had on no, um, no regalia that would have um, indicated that I was a prince, nor did I have on a crown, because I just wanted to slip out unassumingly. So um, she actually was quite angry at me for the fact that her arrow got broken upon a rock that was there and that um, I, I scared away um, whatever it was she was hunting. And so, you know, it was, it was not sort of the clandestine meeting that I think a lot of young elflings expect of um, the one who they're going to be married to, but um, the fact that she treated me different I mean, I, I was very upset at the time about the way she was talking to me, um, but that was part of what sort of um, sparked some attraction, shall we say. And um, I, I sort of afterwards had quite enjoyed the argument, and it wasn't until quite a while later that I actually ever met her again, and she was quite flustered about the fact that she had acted the way she had to the prince. Um, which, you know, I had only seen this very strong side and seeing that more sort of um, fragile side to her, well, at that point, I was completely smitten. So, you know, she was, she was not sort of a commoner, but she was not sort of high nobility either. So my father was not entirely keen on it, you know, um, he had been hoping that I would marry a half Sylvan, half Cinderin um, woman that would have high nobility, and so it, it took him a while to sort of come to grips with the fact that that was not my destiny. And um, you know, I, I think the fact that we were very different people, her and I, was not only part of what attracted us, but part of why we worked so well together because we had the same the same goals, but we, we came about them from very different um, sides. And so I, I just think that that was why it was meant to be. So um, 
I'm going to stop there in the interest of time, but thank you so much for your curiosity, darling. And um, maybe I can talk some more in the future. I I'm not sure yet, but, um, but cheers.